This is the 2023 Acura MDX. This is the Type S model. And we're gonna try to answer the question in today's video. Is this the most unique three row luxury SUV? It definitely is unique based on color. This is Tiger Eye Pearl and the interior color is called Azurite Blue. I hope that's showing up on the screen. It will be very interesting to see what everybody thinks about, well, the way this model basically looks. A very unique look inside and out based on exterior and interior colors. But something else that helps the MDX a lot is the fact that it offers a nice balance of a sporty driving experience with a smooth and compliant ride. That's not something you always get when you have that sporty driving experience that gives it that feel that maybe it has a little more power than it really does. One way or another, this is an enjoyable vehicle to drive and it has a lot of features as far as technology and driving aids for the money. It actually comes in at a lower price than many of its competitors. By the way, I'm in Or Acura here in Shreveport, Louisiana today. Why is that important? Because if you watch this video or any video that I filmed here at Or Acura and you come in to buy a vehicle, tell the salesman that you talked to that you saw the vehicle in one of my videos, you will get $500 off. That's right, it is the vehicle visionary discount. Being that this is the Type S, you're gonna notice some differences here on the front fascia compared to other trim levels of the MDX. Obviously, we're going to have the Type S logo. We're gonna have the multi-jewel LED headlights, the chicane LED daytime running lights. We're going to have the fog lights down there on the lower portion of the bumper. There is a, well, I'll say a reasonable amount, maybe not too much, but a reasonable amount of gloss black trim found here. And the good news is that everything is functional. That's not something we can always say of every vehicle that we show here. And something that I like about this front grill is the way that it looks. It already looks like it's in motion even when the vehicle is not. That's a good thing. And a good close up look for you. I hope the camera is doing justice to this Tiger Eye Pearl exterior color. I have another one of those Type S badges right there. And all over the vehicle, I think it's a good balance. I don't think it's too much, but everything is going to be gloss black as far as the trim all over the vehicle. And the gloss black mirror caps, we're going to have the power adjustable heated power folding side view mirrors. The turn signal indicators are built in. And let's take a quick look at the remote. I'm going to have the remote start right there. That's what that is. And then obviously everything else that you would expect to see here. We're gonna have the rear privacy glass that it almost seems that the gloss black trim kind of makes that look a little bit darker. I don't know what the percentages are on that or I'd give them to you. I'll see if I can get that and put it on the screen. We will have the roof rails up there again with that gloss black exterior color. Now tell me what you think. Should that shark fin antenna be body color or should it be gloss black? I think the body color really fits here. That's gonna flow its way on to the rear window spoiler or rear roof spoiler. We will have the exposed rear window wiper. I like to see that tucked away inside the rear roof spoiler. Just one of those preferences. I know the average person is likely not to be too concerned about that. And you can see the same basic design here with the LED tail lights that mimics what we saw on the front end with the headlight housing. The Type S logo, a little bit more of that trim that works its way back here and finishes things off, not only in the area on the top of the bumper, you also have the rear splitter back here as well, or excuse me, rear diffuser. Yes, you can laugh that I messed up on that, but we're doing this in one take. I've gone too far to start over now and we'll have the quad tip exhaust. Under the hood is the turbocharged three liter V6. It makes 355 horsepower, 354 pounds feet of torque. It's mated to a 10 speed automatic transmission. And you'll notice with all of the open vents, the grills, upper and lower, everything here, that actually is intentional to allow more airflow also, this has been aerodynamically tested. This vehicle is very much meant to be different from your typical Acura MDX, and it is all wheel drive. And you have the Type S specific 21 inch wheels. You're gonna notice those red brake calipers that really stand out. 
Tell me what your thoughts are. What would you think about having body color brake calipers? Would that be too much maybe of that exterior color? Tell me what your thoughts are on that. And how about tire size? 275 is so wide, the 275 width, that just about is as far as my hand can stretch. And we'll have the 40 series sidewall. We do have adaptive air suspension as well. And if you thought I forgot, don't worry, I'm gonna tell you about the MPGs. They are 17 city, 21 highway, 19 combined, and if you're curious, I don't know how many people ask this question, but I'll share it anyway. The gas tank size is 18 and a half gallons. If you're interested in towing anything with your MDX, it can tow up to 5,000 pounds. You do have the motion sensor back here. A multitude of different ways to open the rear cargo area to reveal the 18.1 up to 95 cubic feet worth of cargo capacity. Let's see if I can do this one handed. Kind of hard to do sometimes that way. We'll see if we can make that a little bit easier. And obviously you can lower the middle row seats as well. But I like the configurability of what we have here. You can remove this seat as well. And you can also lower these seats. So that makes a big difference. But that's not all we have. Let's just say you're hauling something in this area. The rear seats are in their upright position and you're hauling something back here, but you're saying to yourself, I don't want to get that carpet dirty. You know what? There's an easy solution for that. Now we're going to find out how talented I am one-handed. Can I do this? I don't know if I can. We're going to find out here. Let's see here. It's just a little awkward, but you know what? I think I managed to pull it off. Well, maybe not. There we go. You can turn that floor over. It has a plastic side as well. So a dual sided floor, that definitely makes a difference and you do have some extra storage space underneath. And just in case you're interested in seeing the proof of what I said about removing that middle row seat. Well, there you go. So quite a few options that that could open up. And we'll take a closer look into the Azerite blue interior. Very nice looking. Normally, I have to say, I'm not a huge fan of white contrast stitching or the white piping, but it just seems to fit with this particular interior color. You do have the nice, comfortable armrest. I'll give it the armrest test and say, yes, it is comfortable for my arm to rest on there. You've got the nice large bottle holder and space for additional snacks and whatever else anybody wants to put in with the door bin. And you're going to have the panoramic sunroof. And one thing I wanted to show before we hop into the third row and talk about overall space is the fact that you can see I have the seats here on the left hand side all the way back, the seat over there on the right hand side all the way forward. So that gives you an idea of potentials for leg space. For third row passengers, I do like the fact that you can push that button right there and it gets the seat up and out of the way and makes it easier to gain access to this rear seating area. So let me hop on back here. Yeah, it is a little bit tight like this, but if I slide over here, guess what? That improves by a lot. I have a lot more space. And let's see here. Well, you can see my headroom right there. I'm five foot 10. I can be comfortable right there. So just in case you were curious, now you know what you have where that's concerned. We do have the cup holder right here and a USB port as well. If I was gonna sound the gong on anything, that would probably be what, what we have with the location of the USB port. I would really like to have it right here, although that does have benefit for tailgating potentially when the rear door is open. And if you were curious to know what it looks like from this particular perspective with the panoramic sunroof, there is your answer. And one last thing before I hop out of the rear seat area, the good news if whoever's in the middle row seat area forgets about the rear seat passengers, well, all you have to do is push that button right there. And once again, the seat automatically gets up and out of the way. And as far as middle row passengers go, quite a bit of space here as far as storage goes. A little bit of gloss black to liven things up, if you want to put it that way. And then we have the third zone of the tri-zone climate control. Now, I would like to see ventilated seats back here, but you do have the heated seats, not a big deal. And then the 115 volt or 150 watt outlet right there, the dual USB ports and the 12 volts. So quite a bit in the way of connectivity back here and also the dual air conditioning vents. 
And taking a look into the front seat area through the passenger side door, nice large door bin, just about the same size, maybe a little bit bigger than what we saw in the rear. And you can see something you don't always see. At the price point of a vehicle like this, this is something I believe it absolutely should have. And that is going to be seat memory on the passenger side, which means you're obviously going to have seat memory on the driver's side. Fully adjustable power seats for the driver and passenger. They are heated and more importantly, they are also ventilated. That's really important for those of us living in Northwest Louisiana, especially here in the month of June. Going to have some more of that gloss black that continues its way into and across the interior as far as the dash area goes. We've got the nice felt material here. Makes it very comfortable to reach into the glove box if you're going to put gloves in there. And then you have the 12 volt power outlet right here, kind of hidden away, but there it is in case you were wondering about that. And also hidden away, another option for USB connectivity. Everything taken care of quite nicely here. We have the dual zone climate control. And like I said, you have the ventilated seats, which is what I'm going to take advantage of today on the test drive. And even while we're talking about the interior of the vehicle, your dual zone climate control and the push button shifter. Tell me what you think about that. Do you like that? Would you like to see something different? I'm always curious to know a little bit of storage right here as well as your cup holders. Here's your wireless charging pad and the multitasking lid for the center console. Why is it a multitasking lid? Because it's also an armrest, but we can open that up and take a look. There are a couple of ways to open this. So what I did was use this button right here. There's also the release right here that allows you to open up and see the inside of the center console. Quite a bit of space in there and even more connectivity. There's definitely no shortage of connectivity options within this interior. Before we hop into the interior, let me show you these power folding side view mirrors in action. When you lock or unlock the vehicle, that's what's going to happen. Just in case you were wondering, I talked about it, but I didn't demonstrate it earlier. And I likely don't need to tell you too much about what you have here with the additional buttons and switches on the driver's side door. And we'll take a look here at some of our functionality that we can use. You also have the control right here for the tilt and telescopically adjustable steering wheel. It is power adjustable. And when you hop in, that is what happens. For those of you who maybe are not so familiar with the Acura brand, now that's not going to be unique, just that whole overall process. Some of the graphics are, but it doesn't matter the trim level of the MDX that you buy. You're still going to have that same effect. Not a big deal, just in case you were wondering about that. And you do have a very nice look here with the digital instrument cluster. It has a nice modern look to it. You can see the different features and functionality that we have here as far as what is on the screen. Your steering wheel mounted controls are here. You're also going to have another Type S logo down there. If anybody forgets they're in an Acura MDX Type S, well, there's all kinds of places you can point to and say, well, just take a look for yourself. There it is. Now, the one thing that I know a lot of people talk about wanting with this vehicle is a touch screen. The reason it is not a touch screen, I mean, I'm five foot 10 and I can't even, eh, maybe I can reach it, but that's a long way to reach from my driving position. So you're actually going to use the trackpad right here to control everything. And it's not that hard. You're just gonna scroll your way around with the trackpad, and then you're going to actually push. I don't know if you can see me do that on the screen or not, but you actually just push down on that, and that will allow you to actually go and select whatever it is, whatever it is, excuse me, that you want to select. And we're gonna have a multi-view rear view camera so depending on what you want to see, well, you can make selections on that. You also have the overhead 360 degree view. And then I'm gonna go into park. We also had the front view camera as well. So quite a bit in the way of different options. You might have seen the cameras mounted to the lower portion of the side view mirrors earlier. Well, that's how you get that view. So quite a bit going on here, that's for sure. But with all that horsepower and torque under the hood, what is this MDX like to drive? Let's get out on the road and find out. And by the way, even though I didn't mention it earlier, you probably saw the shifter paddles right here that you can use to manage the 10-speed automatic transmission. And before we get out for the test drive, I do need to remember to tell you about the different driving modes. So we have comfort, we have snow, 
We also have lift. So if you need to raise the suspension, you can actually do that. You have normal, you have sport. And then if you push right here, you can go into individual. So a lot of options where that is concerned. And when you turn the vehicle off, here's what happens. Again, I apologize for you Acura veterans out there. You're used to the brand, you know what's there. But for those of you who don't, I just wanted to show you what happens when you turn the ignition off. I promise we're going on a test drive, but I, there's just so much I need to remember to tell you about. There is a head-up display here as well. Just wanted to make sure I showed you that it's here. Okay, here we go. I promised you the test drive, and eventually we would finally get out here and do it. So here we go out with the MDX. And like I said earlier in the video, it has a nice, comfortable ride quality, but it still handles great. That's not something you normally get with vehicles that if they handle really well, they tend to have a little bit more of a rough ride because everything is stiffer, but that's not the case here. A lot of comfort and convenience here within the interior. It definitely a well-rounded vehicle in a multitude of ways. And I'll tell you what, I'm gonna have to be a little careful here. So we're gonna slow way down, but when you want to go, you can. I won't get into it too much. We'll get on out of here before you upset the neighbors. But the power here and the torque, when you drop the hammer, drop the loud pedal, well, you definitely get up and go. For those of you who understand the principles behind merging into traffic on an interstate or a highway where the speeds are, are fairly high, 55 or higher, whatever the case is, even lower than that, you have plenty of horsepower here so you can safely merge into traffic by not driving under the speed limit. Yes, that's a little bit of a hint to some of you as well. I do not like merging behind people who are doing 20 and 30 under the speed limit in such situations. That is not a fun experience. Handling is definitely great here, and you have a nice, comfortable steering wheel, as I showed you earlier in the video. It's heated. It would be interesting to have a ventilated steering wheel. I don't know how comfortable that would be, but it might have its advantages. I don't know. Tell me what you think down in the comments section. Maybe tell Acura what you think down in the comments section. The seating itself also nice and comfortable, obviously fully adjustable. And with all of the different safety features you have here, it, it really makes this a great vehicle to drive as far as your lane departure, lane keeping assist, road departure, all that good stuff. It's all here. In fact, very high rating on safety as far as the MDX goes. A really great vehicle. I know the one thing that a lot of people want to see change on these models would be the infotainment screen becoming a touch screen. I'm not sure if we're going to see that in the future. I know it's not going to happen for 2024. In fact, it might be 2024 before we get moving again because of this person in front of us. Hey, that was kind of a perfect way to get take advantage of that, but they were already pulling out of the driveway by the time I came around the corner, so I'll cut them a break. But one way or another, a very enjoyable vehicle to drive. The head-up display, I hope it showed up on the screen when I showed that to you earlier. It is nice and bright. You also have your speed limit sign recognition with that. So quite a bit working in favor of the MDX. Tell me what your thoughts are if this is something you plan to buy. So tell me what you think down in the comments section. Is this 2023 Acura MDX Type S the most unique three-row luxury SUV? Based on exterior color and interior color, it sure is in the front running for such a thing. And then you add in the additions of what this Type S model has compared to other more traditional, we'll say, trim levels of the MDX. There's definitely a lot here that separates it apart. Got to say a special thanks to my friends here at Or Acura for loaning me this MDX for the day. Don't forget about that vehicle visionary discount that you can take advantage of here at Or Acura. There is a link in the description of the video to this model, by the way, and to their website in general if you're interested in another Acura product. And I also have to say a special thanks to each and every one of you for being kind enough to give me the opportunity to give you a vision for your next vehicle. If you enjoyed this video, and want to learn about other vehicles you may wish to consider purchasing, check out the video that's on the screen right now, and I will see you there.